In this question, they tell us that the sum of five positive integers is 14. Some of the integers repeat, and we want the greatest possible value for the integers. Well, to get the greatest, set up and use the least numbers. Usually it's going to be a 1. Well, in this case, if we've got five positive numbers and they add up to 14, if we make four of them 1s, that'll give us 4. We subtract the 4 from 14. The greatest one of the integers could possibly be is 10. In this question, we're given that m is greater than negative 1 but less than 0, and which of the following must be true? Well, remember that when you have a fraction less than 1, as you multiply it by itself, it actually gets smaller. For instance, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. Well, 1 half is greater than 1 fourth. And we're given that this is a negative fraction greater than negative 1. So it would be a negative fraction like negative 3 fourths, negative 1 half, negative 1 third. So we've got two things to consider here. We've got to remember that when we multiply a fraction by itself it gets smaller. And we've got to remember that even exponents turn a negative fraction positive. Let's look at one for instance. Let's just say that m is negative 1 half. Well, negative one-half squared is one-fourth. That's a positive number. So negative one-half squared is going to be the greatest number. When we cube negative one-half, negative one-half cubed is equal to negative one-eighth. So if we set it up, we've got negative one-half is the least. Negative one-eighth is greater because it's less negative. Remember that on the negative side, the number that's less negative is actually greater and one-fourth is a positive value. So the correct answer here is C. This question says that the sum of two positive integers is greater than 30 and the product is less than 60. So which of the following could be one of the integers? In this case, it's easier to work with the answer choices. Work from the answer choices. And what we want to do is target 30. Easiest thing to do is just see what would equal 30 and work from there. Now as we look at 5, we see that 5 plus 25 equals 30. But 5 times 25 is 125, so that's way past 60. So that eliminates A and D. If we look at 10, 10 plus 20 equals 30, but 10 times 20 is 200. And if we look at 15, 15 plus 15, no, 15 plus 15 equals 30, but 15 times 15 is way past 60. But if we look at 30, 30 plus 1 will be greater than 30, be 31. And 30 times 1 is 30, which is less than 60. So see, working off the answer choices helps out. And another clue is, as in this case, if you're going to work for the answer choices, start at the bottom. Because frequently, the SAT, when they think you're going to be working with the answer choices, wants you to work the whole way through, taking as much time as you can. So start with the last two answer choices. We're given here that x is a positive integer and x plus 3 over 2 is an integer, which the following must be true. Well, if it's an integer, that means it's a positive or negative whole number or 0. So for x plus 3 over 2 to be an integer, x plus 3 has to be even. And remember, for an odd number to be added to another number to create an even number, an odd has to be added to an odd. So you got to have odd plus odd equals even. For instance, 1 plus 3 equals 4. Well, if we look at it, that tells us x has to be odd. But does it have to be a multiple of 3? No, we've already said it could be 1. So that's not a multiple of 3. But since it's an odd number, when we add an odd number to another odd number, in 7's case, x plus 7 over 2 would also be an integer. So 1 and 3 are true.